Back to close it out on the Lobo Basketball postgame show from Wise Pies Arena. New Mexico 72 and New Mexico State 59 is your final. The Lobos have taken down their Rio Grande rival in the first of two matchups this season. We're joined for our Delta Dental Coaches comments brought to you by Delta Dental of New Mexico by Lobo head coach Craig Neal. Congratulations, Coach Appreciate Neal. Uh, another big win over New Mexico State, and this rivalry always seems to bring the best out of the pit crowd, almost 14,000 tonight. And uh, there was even one point there in the second half. The, the Lobos had a run going, and I saw you turn to the crowd and then turn to your team, and the defense really answered the bell in the second half. Yeah, the, the thing that was most impressive for me with our guys, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to go any in particulars, but I just said, you guys played exactly how hard that I, I can envision you playing. If you'll play that hard and you'll play with that passion, you'll be able to guard. Now we got to play a little smarter and, you know, we'll, we'll work on some things, but I thought we made some halftime adjustments. We were able to handle the press and, you know, I, <laughs> I knew I was going to do it. I had the bigs taking it out. I didn't do it since I've been the head coach here, and I did it for some reason because I trusted Tim. We had a hard time, and I just said, I'm going back to what we've done before. It's been successful. I, I thought that was going to be kind of our change up, but we had to go to it early because our guards were getting on the sidelines and getting caught and dribbling it too much. And that's what happened. So, you know, I, I probably made that adjustment a little bit too late. But I thought we really made good adjustments at halftime uh, with our defense. I thought we made good adjustments in our offense, and we were able to get the press broke, uh, you know, break the press. And then we were run. We were able to run really good offense, unlike the first half. And you know, I thought that was key. Right now, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm just. Lost her words. I'm look. I'm thinking about the defense in the second half and uh -huh. and how. Well, first of all, twelve turnovers. Right. Better. I Better. Mean, that, that's and, and our, three in the second half. But they can do that. But, yeah. but but we had to correct some things. You know, here's what happened. They got us. We were playing really really hard in the right. first half, Hunter. Yeah. And you know how it is. Yeah. And it's this game. And we had five newcomers mm -hmm. that had never been in this game. Mm -hmm. So everybody was in the individual bubble. Yeah. And what I mean was, is like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. We took quick shots. We didn't move the ball. We didn't get the ball inside. We, we did the individual, I'm going to make a play because they're pressing up on me and I, I'm going to go do it. Then we, and then we went to the team bubble. Everybody got on the team bubble. Yeah. Instead of the individual bubble or, or worrying about themselves, then we were terrific and we, we played hard. And you talked about getting it off to early start mm -hmm. and they used the uh, ball dribble to get to the basket. And you guys were like five for six in the first. Right. You know, out, right out the shoot. And then, of course, like you said, you started to kind of get into the individual play. And Just trust me and stay with me. You're going to get a shot. And sure enough, he took zero yeah. minutes into 12 minutes because he did exactly what I asked him to do and he got in the team bubble, which he'd always been in. It never was an individual thing for him. And that's what I told the guys. I said, Joe Firstinger played 12 minutes, had seven points, was terrific on defense because it was all about being in that team yeah. and all about doing what he does and not trying to make – I told – I've, I've had meetings with our players. I, had, I met with Dane before and told him I wasn't going to play him tonight because I didn't think he was 100%. I didn't want him to regress. And I said, you don't lose your rotation minutes or in the rotation if you're sick or injured. So I just said, I'm going to get you 100%. You'll have had two practices. But if guys think that they only stay on the floor if they score points, and that's what our society's done, we pick all team, all conference, all this by who scores the most points. Not by who's the best player. I don't vote that way. Right. When I do the conference teams, I don't vote that way. But Joe Firstinger was the MVP tonight, hands mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Now, Tim Williams was terrific, yeah, and right. Elijah Brown right, was terrific. Right. But I'm talking about what we needed, needed from a guy to do his role and yeah. star in his role. He was MVP. He was terrific. Yep. And we talked about just not only the stats, but the things just he did, like the five-second count. Twice. Yeah. And, and setting the screen, running the offense, rolling, mm -hmm. you know, making yep. guys open, going to rebound, blocking out, right. getting around Bular. Little things that coaches see and guys that know the game see that aren't in here. That aren't yeah. in the stats, but guys only look at the stats and go, Well, coach looks at the stats and I didn't score and I didn't get any rebound. Well, I gotta get more shots up and I gotta prove I can do something and you just put yourself in a bad deal. Do what you do, star in your role, be in the team bubble, and we got a chance to be terrific. 
And when you do what he did and do all the little things and you let the game come to you, then he finds himself at the free throw line, matched up one-on-one, -on -one, and then he gets a lane line drive and a chance for an and one. And it, you, you take that when it's there. And he, he did it all tonight. Yeah, but the thing is, Robert, that's the biggest stat for him, 12 yeah, minutes. 12 minutes. Yeah. Because he did his role. If you go in there and try to do stuff you can't do or if you get in the game and you catch the ball the first time you catch it and you haven't ran up and down the floor and you're at the top of the key and there's no you could drive a Mack truck for it, you don't shoot a three. Yeah. You don't you don't do stuff that you're not you're not getting used right. to doing. You gotta play your role. And that was Jalen Harris. I mean again, a freshman comes in, plays great minutes, doesn't hurt you. You know, I mean, he can't he looked, guard him. Can't, you can't, yeah, you can't, you can't keep. You nope. can't keep him in front of nope. you. And he tries to do the right thing. He had a wide open lob for Sam that we drew up, and yeah. he just kind of caught. He kind of caught his foot. He wasn't ready, but you can't guard him once you get the ball back in his hands. You can't guard. Well, him. We saw them backstep and give him a lot of room. And then he went it, after him, yeah. but you know, and I thought Jordan Hunter came back in and played yes. terrific minutes. But he's got to play with a higher motor yeah. from the start. And if he does that, it's like I told everybody, play as hard as you can play. And as soon as you're tired, we got guys we can play. And then we're going to do that because we have to develop our bench. I got confidence on all those guys. I don't have a problem putting anybody in. But we got to play harder, and they did that tonight. Speaking of guys with a high motor, Xavier Adams, three minutes in the first half. Was it just the size of New Mexico State and the matchups? Why he yeah, didn't I have, think a, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. a little bit of it. I think we had it. They were big. And, and I just it just happened that way. Now, I think he could have played, but I gave Joe a chance because we had three quick fouls on O and McDougal. McDougal and Connor, and Joe came in and gave us trick mix. Well, how, how do I not go back to him yeah. when they're that big? So, I mean, if you watch the tape, which I will, I think Joe did the best job on Bular because he moved his feet mm -hmm. and got around him, got in front of him, and that's a hard pass to make, and, that's, and that, that makes it difficult. Really nice to see Elijah Brown find a little rhythm there in the second half, too. Yeah, I just told him, I said, just be you. Be the yeah. be a better version of you. And if you're open, you can make a play, score it. If you if you get in there and they collapse on you, don't force it. Kick it out and make, let somebody else have a play. But the first half, he kind of took some questionable shots, some quick ones, and then everybody else was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to get – I'm going to do, do, mine. My, do yeah. mine now. And – they got to get over that, and I think they will. But, I mean, it's a good group. It's a fun group, um, and they can just continue. If they continue to play that hard, we could have a really good season, but we have they have to do that. I, I can't – and you know this, yeah. and I've talked to you about it before. It's hard to coach energy. It's hard to coach. Now, I can motivate them, and I can get them raw rod up, but – I still can't coach energy. But, but the first stinger had it. I don't know what it is. All of a sudden, he came in. And, I mean, every time he flexed, and we were over here going, what's going on? I mean, he well, was just. Well, I mean, when you sit over there, yeah. it gets a little. It's <laughs> so that's what Hunter said. I said it. He said that's the seat it. is a significant motivator. That bench will motivate you. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, a big motivator. And if you don't do what we're asking you to do, I'm able to put guys in. I, I, if you don't guard, I can get, I can put guys in. Now some guys got a little longer leash. Last year they didn't have a leash. This year they do. Yeah, and we're able to play some guys. Another question, Coach. You guys have been giving up about seventy-four points in the first two games. You got it down to fifty-nine. What was the difference? Just how hard they played. I think it's how hard they played. Now I can go through the film and show a bunch of mistakes, but. If they play that hard, they're going to make up for it. And I thought we rebounded it better in the second half. You know, the first little two minutes, the little spell, they had like five or six offensive right. rebounds where the ball was bouncing all yeah. over. Now, we kind of, but we got into them. We rebounded. Um, but if they play that hard, Hunter, playing that hard makes up for mistakes. And, you know, you might not guard the cutter and chase it the right yeah. way, but if you get there, it really doesn't matter with effort. Yeah. And, and that's what they did tonight. I asked you about uh, Eli Chua before we started tonight in the mm -hmm. pregame, and he's got a great future ahead of him. He's already a great player. You guys took him out of the game. Well, I, you know, we didn't talk about O. Yeah. And I thought I, o, I thought O was really active. Yeah. I thought O was better. Uh, I thought he really did a nice job blocking Defense. blocking shots, changed some shot, but he was more mobile. He got tried to go to offensive rebounds. He had a tough couple of breaks where he could have got to the rim, but you know he's been playing so much volleyball in the off season at Lobo Village. He tried to spike the last one on his <laughs> fifth foul, so he's got to get out of that habit and then not know he's playing uh, beach volleyball down at Lobo Village. I asked Hunter this. I'd love to hear from you, Coach Neal. Um, how does Tim Williams? 
get off his shot at 6'8 so comfortably against a 7'2 player the way that he does? Why is he so good? I think Tim Williams thinks he can get it off on a 10-foot guy. <laughs> I do. I just think he, he knows angles. He knows how to get you off balance. He knows he can hit you, and, he, and you're not going to be able to jump, and he's already got it off. He's, he's sneaky quick getting his shot off. He's got sneaky long arms. I don't think it's sneaky, but he's got long arms that you really don't notice, and he's got unbelievable hands and unbelievable touch. Was this another one where at halftime it was, look, Tim Williams – Get him his touches. we got to start there and go from there. Basically. But, I mean, how many games have you guys done in the last – this year and last year that we were down at half and it didn't come out that way? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I challenged them. And I just said, hey, all right, you got one of them this year. You're down at half. You got, you got a chance to get another one. You know, how tough are you going to be? How mentally tough are you going to be? And, you know, all I can say is they played extremely hard, and I'm proud of them. It was a terrific performance. I don't have a lot to say. You know, I, I, I'm – if they play that hard, I'll never be disappointed. I won't because that's all I ask for them to do is play hard. They're going to make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. I just told them, hey, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to make every shot. You're going to turn the ball over. But if you keep striving for excellence, then you'll be a good team if you play that hard. Okay, before we let you go, um, next week is a very big week. Yeah, Obviously, big it's week. Thanksgiving week. But big week. you guys are going to play on the holiday, and it's the Wooden Legacy, and it yeah. starts with Virginia Tech. Yeah, it's you know Buzz is a great coach. They got a great program. It'll be a challenge. I think it's unique that we're very fortunate that they only put they put our game on ESPN national. So we're excited about that for our program. Um, we're going to do some walkthrough stuff tomorrow, some film. We're going to do some shooting, work some of the guys out that didn't play that much, uh, take Sunday off, come back Monday with a good practice, practice Tuesday morning, then we'll take off and get out there Tuesday night and then get ready to go. We play at 1.30 on Thursday, so we'll, we'll hopefully be locked in, and I just hope we can play that hard uh, for three straight games. I know it's a tournament. Will you guys get much time to practice at all? Just you, We'll go down. We'll, Hunter, we'll get there. on. We won't practice on Tuesday. That's why we'll do yeah. it here. We'll, we'll practice the same time that we play. Okay. We'll get an hour. We'll get an hour at the at another site for an hour. We'll do all our team stuff. Then we'll go shoot where we're going to play for an hour. Then we'll be done. And then we'll get ready to play. Congratulations. Another big win over Mexico State. It. That's good for us. Good job, Coach. Good for us. Thanks, guys. Right. Appreciate you. Lobo Head Men's Basketball Coach Craig Neal. The Delta Dental Coach's comments brought to you by Delta Dental of New Mexico. You know, almost 400,000 New Mexicans covered by Delta Dental plans. For more information, log on to deltadentalnm.com. And, Hunter, I want to go back to the Subway sub of the game. Joe Firstinger, Subway restaurants keep you going on and off the court. Stop in today. Subway, eat fresh. Coach Neal said it. Firstinger, the, the box score won't say it, but he was the MVP tonight. Yeah. No, he was. I mean, we. I just got a kick. And he was a fan favorite. I mean, the fans appreciate that kind of effort when he comes in and does those little things. Uh, it just kind of got, I think it got everybody going. I want to thank my uh, producer and engineer back in the studios of uh, Learfield Sports in Jeff City, Malik Taylor. My on-site engineer, Evan Baker, uh, did a terrific job. Michael Carlisle will be back with us uh, tomorrow when we're on the air for you. Uh, from Colorado State for Lobo football. My broadcast partner is Hunter Green. And, Hunter, uh, I mentioned it. Coach Neal bristled a little bit about uh, the questions about Lobo defense after two games. Mm -hmm. Two games. Well, they played some defense tonight. There won't be any questions about the defense in this one against New Mexico State. No, no. I mean, I, that w when you look at all the numbers, 59 points, uh, that was the most impressive where the Lobos were able to hold the Aggies to only 59 points here in the pit. Um, I'm impressed. I, I, and I thought, and he said it was just effort, uh, and, and, and it was in the second half. All right. Thanksgiving Thanks. in your hometown. Yep. We're headed to L.A. That's right. A little Looking turkey, forward to little it. A little turkey day. And yep. some basketball on turkey day. Yep. Midday on ESPN2. It's going to be a blast. Looking forward to it. All right. Coming up next, Scott Stigler uh, with the Overtime Call-In Show live for you on our flagship station, 770 KKOB. I'm Robert Portnoy reminding you, Lobo uh, Athletics, Back on the air tomorrow. Make sure you're tuned in. In Fort Collins, your Lobos are taking on Colorado State with a chance to win a sixth consecutive game for the first time since 1997. Lobo football with two weeks to go is still alive in the Mountain West Championship race. We say so long for now. And the final score for the final time from Wise Prize Arena, the Lobos 72, New Mexico State 59. New Mexico is 3-0 on the year. So long, everybody.
You're missing a Lobo basketball from Learfield. Bank of the West knows it's not just the people in the community that give it character, it's also the businesses that call it home. And we make a point of taking the time to get to know them and their business better, so that when we offer them commercial real estate loans, lines of credit, payroll, or cash management services, we know that we can help them reach their goals. Whether you're in the hardware, healthcare, or high-tech business, we'll help you make your mark. It's another reason to go West. Bank of the West. Equal housing lender member FDIC, loan subject to credit approval. At Creamland Dairies, they're passionate about the purity and freshness of their milk. That's why they subject Creamland Dairy Pure to rigorous testing in order to meet their five-point purity promise. It's what keeps their milk so pure, fresh, and delicious, from farm to fridge. And why Creamland's Dairy Pure and Creamland's True Moo are names you can trust. Starts pure, stays pure. When you want the best, it's Creamland's Dairy Pure. Go Lobos! If you're a business owner, big or small, you're all about investing in the future of your company. Did you know that workers' comp coverage from New Mexico Mutual can be a smart investment? Because they provide free safety education and resources that can actually help reduce the occurrence of workplace accidents and claims. And when you can prevent accidents from happening, your productivity goes up and your costs go down, which means you can keep more of your company's resources for other investments. And with New Mexico Mutual, your premium dollars stay local. Ask your agent today about New Mexico Mutual. Coverage at work. Hello? Hey, hon. They accepted our offer. Our new house? Ooh, when do we close? It's scheduled for tuna day. Subway helps you remember the important days. Friday is tuna day. That's today's 356-inch sub of the day. The tasty tuna sub contains no artificial flavors.